Hey everyone, today we're going to cover how to create a subsurface scattering material using Substance Painter and then render using Maya and V-Ray. I'll first cover how to quickly set up the SSS in Substance Painter, then show how to export the texture maps, and then finally I'll show how to set up the SSS material in Maya and V-Ray. You can jump to any part of the tutorial that is relevant to you using the bookmarks I have created. This is also a new format where I answer questions posted on my YouTube videos and Instagram. I'm just calling it Ask Me Anything About 3D Art. So make sure to post any questions you may have and then I'll try to make a video answering the questions. If you like this new format then comment down below and a like and subscribe is always appreciated as I continue to grow this channel. So with that, let's get started. Alright, so here we are in Substance Painter and you can see that I have a candle here that's already set up and fully textured. This just started off with kind of the candle wax material in Substance Painter and I kind of modified the settings and then also added some color variation to make it a little bit look uh, older and you know a little bit decrepit and then definitely added some cracks in here uh, to really make it look like it's been kind of uh, sitting there for a while and then somebody came to, to light it. Um, so now we're going to want to get that nice subsurface scattering effect. So to get subsurface scattering inside of uh, Substance Painter, you need to do a few things. All right. Now the first thing that we need to do is in our texture set settings here, we need to go ahead and then add a scattering uh, channel. Okay, so this is going to be used for subsurface scattering. All right. And this is going to be just a grayscale value. So if you scroll down here, you can see that if I were to enable this on just like my main uh, base material here, you can see that it's just a, a grayscale value. All right. For now, I'm going to just disable that because we're going to create that uh, on a separate separate layer. The next thing that we're going to do is go to the display settings and then activate subsurface scattering. So if you scroll down here, you can see that right under temporal anti-aliasing, you have activate subsurface scattering. And then we can go ahead and enable that. So if we go ahead and enable that, and then you can see it's set to 16 samples. Keep in mind as you increase the samples, it's going to take uh, a little bit more uh, time to uh, render, and then it'll just be more resource intensive. All right. Now, what I'm going to want to do so we can start seeing some things is in here, I'm going to just create a new uh, fill layer here. And this is just going to be my subsurface scattering layer. Okay, so I can just create it at the top. That's fine. And then what I can do is basically just alt click scattering. And then now I can give this a scattering value. And if I go ahead and set this all the way up to one, you can see what starts to happen. So take a look at that. We get this nice, we're already starting to see that. Now it's a subtle effect here uh, as we, we start to do that. But there's still a couple more things that we can do to make this effect uh, pop a little bit more in this substance viewport. So what we want to do is in display settings, scroll down even further, and then you're going to find uh, shadows here. Actually, you want to scroll back up to find that. So if I scroll back up, you can see that I have shadows right here. So I go ahead and enable shadows. And then the last thing that we need to do is head over to shader settings here in the top right. And you can see that subsurface scattering parameters that's already enabled on my end. Uh, so unless you have that enabled, uh, you wouldn't see that. So this is the last thing that you need to uh, enable. And then you can, of course, change the scale uh, and the color uh, by increasing the scale. It'll increase the effect of it. I mean, we can leave it at default. This is mainly used for visualizing. But just so we can stay close, I mean, I would, you know, it's depending on what you're trying to visualize here. I'd go for something a little bit more orange red for this candle wax. Um, but uh, but yeah, so once you have all of those settings, you're pretty much ready to go with uh, subsurface scattering in Substance Painter. We get this nice uh, effect right here in the Substance Viewport, which is nice. And this uh, will make things a little bit easier to see. All right. Now we want to, you can quickly kind of do some things and, you know, I take a look at some of the tutorials from algorithm algorithmic. Uh, they have some nice tutorials kind of covering subsurface scattering, but something, the key thing you need to keep in mind is that the subsurface scattering that we're viewing here is kind of a real time approximation. This isn't real ray traced uh, subsurface scattering. We could of course head over to iRay here and we can do a quick sample render, right? And you can start to see the scattering happening, okay? Now, the thing to keep in mind here 
is that substance is made to work with I ray. So if we like our scattering that's happening here, and then we're like, great, I want to take that into V-Ray or Arnold, there's a different workflow that needs to happen, and we need to use the ray tracing and uh, subsurface scattering inside of V-Ray uh, or Arnold and, and set that up properly. So we're going to walk through that. All right. Now, the one thing that I want to do was to kind of show you how to quickly use anchor points here with this uh, subsurface uh, scattering. And we can do that quickly by going to the subsurface scattering layer, right clicking and adding a black mask. Now that I have this black mask, I can go ahead and add a uh, just a fill layer. OK, now what's typically good to use is the uh, thickness map within uh, within Substance Painter. These are created when you do under texture set settings when you bake your mesh map. So all of that has been baked already. So make sure you have those and I can go ahead now and type in uh, or really just find it right here under project. So I want to grab this thickness map here and then drag that over to grayscale. So that's now applied to my, that's going to be used as my mask. And what that's going to help us do is that anywhere that we have, you know, thicker areas, it's going to, you know, spend more time uh, scattering or it won't scatter as much, I should say. All right, so now that we have that, we can go ahead and add a levels. And what this is going to do is help uh, if we just set that to invert, right? And then now you can start to see we're just mainly getting the scattering happening at the top, which is basically where the it's not nearly as thick. So that's why I wanted to invert the map, okay? Now, what we can do is you can see I have these nor these cracks which are, you know, created using height and normal, and I have it here. So if I can toggle that on and off, what you can do is kind of add that as an anchor. So what I can do here is go down to the cracks layer. So go to the cracks layer and select the mask. And with this mask selected, we want to right click and add an anchor point. Because the reason why is if you go back to uh, the subsurface scattering layer and take a look at this mask, the nice thing is you can just go to this view here, go down to mask and you can kind of see the mask here. So you can see more clearly what we're trying to do. So now that we have this, I've added that anchor point under the cracks mask. Then I want to add a fill layer under the subsurface scattering. So I go ahead, uh, the subsurface scattering mask, so right click that and then add fill layer. And then with this fill layer here, I want to go ahead now under grayscale and go to anchor points. So here you can see now it's going to use an anchor point with the cracks. So I go ahead and do that. And so it's anchoring to the cracks that I have. And then you can simply set this to multiply. And there you go. This is just a nice quick way just to get use anchor points to combine different cracks and get those cracks to kind of show up in the subsurface scattering. And then if you want to, you can of course tone that down, but this will kind of work for what we want. You can see without it, it's fine, but this is just something that I wanted to share. I kind of saw this um, uh, posted by Algorithmic and wanted to make sure to share that to people watching this video. All right, great. So I can switch ahead and go ahead and just hit M on my keyboard. We can see that we're all set up here and things are looking good. Well, now we need to export this to Mayan V-Ray. So this is going to be focused specifically on the workflow to bring it into Maya and V-Ray. So the first thing that we need to understand is if we go to Mayan V-Ray here, you can kind of see this is what we're trying to achieve with some subsurface scattering. And we're not going to show you different effects here by using this scattering map. So if I go to, I'll move this to my other monitor here and open up the Hypershade. If I go ahead and open up the Hypershade, what we're going to want to be using is the V-Ray Fast SSS2. If I go ahead and do that, and I'll just go ahead and output connections, and we're going to just focus on this one, right? So I'll just call this candle, all right? Now you can see here this is a little bit different than the V-Ray material, the standard one. So we can't use the normal V-Ray Next uh, metallic, rough no, uh, metallic roughness workflow. Because that, you know, here we're using diffuse, roughness, reflection, 
you know, and uh, normal maps. But here we, we can still use normal maps, but the key thing that we need to understand is that it's using specular for subsurface scattering. So with that, you know, we need to go back to Substance Painter and we need to take a look at the export textures. And if I go to these export textures here, you can see uh, under the templates here, there's a V-Ray Next specular glossiness. So if I select that, this is where I'm going to want to use the diffuse, the specular, the glossiness, and everything coming out of here. Now, you can see there's something called SSS down here. This is actually something I created and something that we're going to use to export uh, custom out of Substance Painter. So I'm going to delete this, and I'll show you how to quickly add that. So what I want to do is create a new output map. And here, I'm going to basically just copy this uh, so that way it kind of follows the naming convention. And then that's where I just put SSS here. So I'll delete this and put SSS for subsurface scattering. And then we're going to want to grab the scattering channel or input and then drag that over the gray channel. Go ahead and select gray channel and there you go. So you can see now we're set up to have SSS exporting. Now there's still one more thing that we need to do. If you remember, I said we need diffuse and then we really need glossiness. We don't need specular right now. So I'm gonna actually close this, go to our channels under texture set settings, and then I'm gonna go ahead and make sure to add in those missing channels. So I wanna make sure to go ahead and add diffuse. And I wanna go ahead and make sure to add glossiness. All right, so then now that should be everything, including scattering. And I can go to File, Export Textures. And we can see, again, nothing, nothing's, nothing's changed, but everything's ready to go. We want to make sure to match our channels here with our output maps. Otherwise, if Substance doesn't see a diffuse map here in our channels, it's not going to export it out. It won't just automatically add that. All right, so we want to go here now. And keep in mind, I just edited this. So you could make a copy. You can duplicate this if you don't want to overwrite that. But for now, this is fine. I just added subsurface scattering. So you go to output templates and you find whichever template that you modified. And I want to do V-Ray Next specular glossiness. So I want to select that. I'm going to use PNG. 8 bits is fine. And I'm going to use 2048. So these are the main things that I modified. And then we'll keep dilation infinite. Then I want to select the output directory. And I just want to make sure to just put that right in my Maya project folder, which is going to be right here in my source images. So you can navigate to wherever you want to, but basically you just want it in your Maya project folder. So you go ahead and select that folder. And then once everything's set up, you go ahead and do a quick export. And then here we can see diffuse, glossiness, height, which is fine, normal, and subsurface scattering have all exported. These are the key maps that we're going to be using to set it up in Maya and V-Ray. So with that exported, let's head over to Maya and V-Ray. All right, so we're back in Maya and V-Ray, and we're taking a look at what we have. And just so you can kind of get a quick understanding of how things are set up, I'm going to go ahead and just set this to progressive so we can iterate faster. It's using just a... Uh, you know, standard 540. I'm just using uh, a radiance map, light cache with really low GI settings just so I can work a little bit faster. And then I have some overrides set up. Well, really, if I just do a quick render here and, you know, I have this uh, candle and just do a quick, quick render, you'll see that this is just a, you know, a clay standard theory material. And the only thing that's really, you know, unique about this lighting setup is that, you know, I just have a simple uh, light sphere here that's basically set up as my candle wick. And it's using lumens um, because 12 and a half lumens is equal to about the intensity of one candle or one candela. So that'll work for what I need here. And then I just have a kind of this fill light just to help uh, illuminate the scene a little bit. And then just a black background. And I'm just doing that so I can better see the uh, subsurface scattering within my scene. All right. So that's the basic light setup that I have. And if I go here now, I can go ahead and drag in the files that I exported. And if I go over here, 
to Windows, you'll see uh, kind of what I have here. What's the diffuse, the glossiness, normal, and subsurface scattering. Now what I can do is uh, I can go ahead and just drag these maps right into, into Maya. So go ahead and left click drag, and then there we go. So I can go back to Maya. And you guys may have seen uh, a video of mine previously where I show how to do the PBR workflow and go from Substance Painter to Maya V-Ray using the plugin. Unfortunately, the plugin, as far as I know, doesn't work with subsurface scattering. So you, you kind of still have to do this manually, which is fine. And we're just going to walk through this now. All right. So here's the, uh, actually, nope, this is the base material, which we don't want. We want the subsurface scattering material here. All right, so the first key thing here is I always recommend spending a little bit of time at uh, V-Ray's and Chaos's um, documentation. The V-Ray Fast material will really help you quickly understand how these work. We're gonna be using obviously the subsurface color and you can see that the subsurface color is basically almost like the base color. It's the main surface of the color. The scatter color, this is the one that actually changes once light gets into the object and is absorbed uh, by the material. That's what's, you know, the tint or the color that's going to be coming from that. And you'll see all of these different ones. Now, keep in mind, I'm using V-Ray Next. This is V-Ray 5 documentation. But the other one, most of these settings uh, are pretty much the same. The ones that we will be messing with are the scatter color. Uh, and subsurface scatter color, or subsurface color, and then the scatter radius. So these are gonna be kind of the key settings, and then we're gonna just plug in the maps and kind of work from there. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead now and simply just apply the base subsurface scatter material to our candle, and then we can see kind of what's happening. So I need to make sure that I select it, just making some room here, and. I go ahead and hold uh, right click on my material and then assign that. If I go ahead and quick do a quick material or a quick render of the new material. You can see, all right, we're all, you know, it, it is already starting to behave like a subsurface scattering material. And if I go ahead and take a look at that, well, that was weird. But if I go ahead and take uh, a look at that, you know, this is uh, this is what I would expect. OK. So, oh, that was set to world positions, that's why. So, so if we go here, we can see the difference. We can start to see we're already starting to get some nice subsurface detail. So let's plug in our maps, right? This is the whole point of this, right? So what I can do is, what I typically do is, you know, you can plug in the diffuse either to uh, overall color and diffuse color. The key thing is, if you put it on overall color and don't mess with diffuse, and diffuse amount is set with zero, it will ignore diffuse color. So you can use diffuse as the overall color or the diffuse color, uh, and then kind of play with those settings. And I'll show you, you know, how that uh, how that affects it. Okay. The next thing that we want to do is scroll down. You can see that we have subsurface color. This is where we want. This is where you'd want to plug in the subsurface scattering uh, map here. So if I hold middle mouse, drag that, I can put that on subsurface color. Now, what type of color do I want this to scatter? Well, I'd want this to maybe be more of that kind of yellow or gold tint. I have kind of some materials here. Um, so we have that. And the next thing I want to do is increase the scatter radius to something about eight. 8 centimeters. So 8 centimeters is going to allow it to scatter a lot more. And instead of kind of stopping here, it'll definitely kind of get some nicer scattering uh, further down the candle. Then we want to plug in the glossiness map into the specular glossiness. So if I hold middle mouse drag, this behaves exactly like the roughness or the glossiness map like you typically find in a V-Ray material. So we're gonna plug that in. Then we're gonna to go to map type, bumping normal map, and then change that to normal map in tangent space. So we're gonna change that to normal map in tangent space, and then we're gonna grab normal, middle mouse drag that, and bring it over to map. Now, if you remember again, what I've covered in my past tutorials, we can't move forward without changing the color space. So normal and glossiness, because those are, are need to be unedited, we have to set these to raw. So the raw, the normal is set to raw, then glossiness is also set to raw. Anything that's a grayscale map. 
All right, now you're gonna, we're gonna come back here to the subsurface scattering texture. Let's see how this looks right now, right? So if I see right now my material, I have this as candle. And if I select the candle object, we can see that it has the right material. So let's go ahead with that and just render, right? So right now we've got something that looks quite a bit weird, right? So let's take a look at our material and see why that's happening. So if I go ahead and stop that, I want to go back to our V-Ray uh, material here and take a look at uh, what may be causing that. All right. So this is where I imagine a lot of people get stuck. I know when my students are working through this and rendering, they, they're having a hard time trying to get things set up and then they get stuff like this and they get discouraged. And, you know, the thing that we need to understand is how it's handling the subsurface scatter color. What I actually want to do right now is just break this connection. I don't want to connect this right now because if we take a look at what's happening with this texture here, let me go ahead and find that and pull that up. This subsurface scattering material, this texture, this is what this is using. This isn't actually what we want to use, right? So if I go ahead and uh, close this, you can see that's why everything's starting to look really black. Well, I can go ahead and break this connection here under subsurface scatter. So it looks like, uh, yep, I already broke the connection. So the subsurface scattering is no longer connected. Now just to make sure, just right click break connection. And then what I can do is then set the subsurface scattering. If you drag left to right, it'll kind of set it back to black and white. Set it to kind of more of this like lighter gray or lighter white. And then you can go ahead and render, okay? So this now, is a little quite a bit closer to what we want to achieve. We're starting to get the scattering from the subsurface scatter material. We're starting to get the all of the details of the cracks and the glossiness. Everything that we set up inside of Substance Painter is now coming through. We're just we just need to use V-Ray's subsurface scatter system. Now, I know sometimes people, you know, you can use uh, you can definitely use texture maps or color maps for for scattering, right? So what you can do is, you know, alter these maps here, okay? So I'll show you what I mean. So what I end up doing is you can see kind of what I've done here is I actually disregard or uh, don't really use the scattering. Um, map instead if I go back to export textures here and I go to my uh, output templates what I end up wanting to use is uh, the thickness map okay so if I go ahead and do a another grayscale and then we'll do SSS but this time I'm going to talk call it you know thickness and I want to use this thickness map here I'll drag that and drop that here. So I'll do from get gray channel. Okay. And we'll leave that as is. And then if I can go ahead to export here, we can actually just tell it to quickly uh, only do the thickness map because that was the only thing that uh, really changed. All right. So you can go ahead and export that and it'll quickly export that out as a uh, 2K map. So now we have this, this is the thickness map. And the thickness map is, you know, a good start for using the uh, subsurface scattering. And if I go back to Photoshop, you can see basically what I have here. So I'll disregard all of this or turn all of that off, drag the thickness map and, you know, bring it back into here. Actually, I want to make sure just to drag it right into this Photoshop file. And we got that and just turn on the group we can see what we have and all i did was you basically just want this to be an rgb color because I, I actually was going to open it up separately anyways but since it's a gray channel you do have to go to image mode and change this to rgb because this is going to be a colored map not a gray channel so with this you can see now i can kind of give this like this light tint for the scattering color and then i can go ahead and you know i give it a and a levels adjustment. So it's a little bit more, you know, a little bit more contrast. You know, I can tone that down if I want and just kind of work from here. So I can go ahead now and, you know, 
save this and instead you know i'll just call this instead of sss and to confuse things i think i'll just call this you know thickness here thickness uh, rgb okay since i do have a grayscale uh, version from substance so then now if i go to uh, we're going to look at this one in a second if i go back to the candle here and i want to bring in the rgb i can go ahead and do that drop that in and this is going to stay uh, srgb since this is a colored map and we want the colored uh, color correction there and we want to put this on the subsurface scatter color so we put on the subsurface scatter color which again if you look at the documentation and understanding what the subsurface scatter color does this is the what we're, what we're trying to look for here okay between scatter color and then subsurface scatter okay so we're going to put this on subsurface color here and if i go ahead and just kind of re-output connections go ahead and do a another quick render and then you can start to see what's happening so now we're starting to get kind of the i the results that we expect and we're starting to impact that uh quite a bit right and you can see now the scattering that's coming from the base texture here or the subsurface color is coming from this thickness map with rgb okay so i can go ahead and stop that so you can see kind of you're getting slightly different results here but this is now coming from the colored map. We're getting kind of these darker parts because this is coming from the thickness map. So you can always make adjustments uh, there. Now, for example, if I wanted to change the scatter color to something a little bit more drastic, right? Like look at this green. Now you'll see where the green is coming from, right? If I change the scatter color there. So you can see the impact that this is happening with between subsurface color and scatter color, okay? So I'll undo that, kind of set that back, delete that, and there you go. So at the end of the day, the main thing I want you to understand is you can use the substance thickness map, the, sc the scatter color map. You can create your own in Photoshop, or you can disregard, or not disregard, but you can leave those off, and then you can just kind of work with just the default you know, uh, subsurface scattering nodes here. All right. So there's all of that. Keep in mind, actually, what I'm going to do is stop that and set up IPR. And you can see here, like if I wanted to uh, adjust the diffuse color, uh, I can. Right now it's set to, to zero. I can set this to 0 0.5. So now it'll have an impact on it right and if i wanted to change like i always just kind of change it to something drastic so i can see what the diffuse color impacts you know how it changes like okay it's going to kind of just be this overall tint and color you know you can kind of change it to this nicer more you know this lighter version of the candle and kind of work from there or it can be more of this yellow color uh and you can you know get again more drastic effects uh this way all right, so that was diffuse color. I wanted to make sure to touch that. Um, so you can see how we're getting all sorts of different effects with subsurface scattering, um, you know, happening here, you know, between this with the textured one and this with the non uh, scatter color, but it's still using all of our substance nodes. Okay. The last thing I wanted to touch base on was this cute little elephant here. So you can see here again. You know, there's, I did two renders here. One that shows just the subsurface scattering on the entire elephant. You can see that it's just this and it's using these colors and these attributes here. It's using the preset skin. So this, you know, is kind of cool looking and makes the elephant look like it has, you know, you know, basically scattering skin all over. But here you can see that I can actually use this again just like i did with the thickness map i can just do a quick view here and you can see now like this is what's being used it's kind of like an ao map or a thickness map right so you can kind of combine those two maps to basically tell v-ray hey only focus 
on the ears and the tip of the nose as being the most scattered surfaces on this elephant. That's typically what you'd find anyways. If you look at references of elephants, this is where their skin is the, the thinnest and this is where their skin is the thickest, you know, with their with their, you know, large feet and whatnot. So you're not going to have as much scattering. But for a more stylized approach, you could go this route. So I wanted to make sure to show one more example here. I hope this, this helped clarify a few things as far as how subsurface scattering is handled. Keep in mind, the only reason that you can go into iRay is because with subsurface scattering these textures is because there's a built connection here, right? There is no connection to go from Substance Painter to V-Ray. So you have to rebuild the subsurface nodes with the textures using V-Ray's workflow, um, material workflow. And we have all of our substance materials and textures plugged in, and it looks really, really good. All right, I think that's it. I think that's enough. Uh, hopefully this clarified some questions on how to handle subsurface scattering. As always, um, uh, you know, looking forward to, to doing this format more. Uh, I already got a list of questions from people on the YouTube channel uh, and Instagram. So if you want to add to the list, I'm going to try to knock some of these questions out over, you know, the coming weeks and the coming months. So just need a little bit of time to, to knock that out. That's all. All right. Thanks, everyone. Um, take care and be safe out there. Goodbye.